So I may just add to what you said in terms of the questions and the issues. Um, what, what you said about pressure on spectrum is perfectly correct, that we have way too few landlines, we have way too many mobile users, and way too little spectrum. And one dimension is to alleviate the pain by having more spectrum. I also wanted to point out parenthetically that there is another ameliorating factor, which is that we in India, in urban economics, don't do high rise. The what in Bombay is called the FSI, a measure of how high up the building goes. Uh, in India, the values are essentially the lowest in the whole world. So I just want to play a counterfactual that as you start getting high rise in India, this problem is going to become horrendous because you will have a larger and larger number of users in one physical space competing for the same frequency. I think a bit of this has started happening in Hyderabad. Hyderabad has an FSI of five. It is the highest FSI in India today. And in the best areas of Hyderabad where the, all that has been built out, the congestion on spectrum is really bad. Uh, so second, uh, while there are reasonable reasons why there should be a lack of performance on the part of telcos, there is also an issue of fair play. A customer is being told you're signing on for some such rate plan. And if the performance simply doesn't match what was promised, then that is not fair. So just truth in advertising requires being more careful. So I will hold myself up as a bizarre example of what has happened. I'm not over enthusiastic to sign on for 4G. So I'm on an Airtel 3G. I am the most enthusiastic customer of bandwidth. I'm the hungriest user of a snappy line. But I basically think that in no time, the 4G performance will be bad. So I haven't even bothered going to 4G. Okay, and I, I am an enthusiastic bandwidth user. I'm not price sensitive. It is just that I have zero trust in the performance. That I, I feel in urban neighborhoods, Airtel will not be able to deliver any meaningful performance on 4G. That's my opinion. I may be wrong. I would love to be wrong. So maybe it's just my laziness. But consumer protection requires fair play. This is a basic market failure that you go to a restaurant, you buy a meal, and you don't know whether there are rats in the kitchen and they've spoiled the meal. So the promises that are being made it just doesn't make sense for consumers to invest the time and trouble to really analyze the offerings and assemble the data and study it. I want to point out a fascinating feature that really hits me in this field is that all of us, our first best answer is let's have more landlines, we'll use Wi-Fi. Okay? Now, you think there's a very small amount of spectrum that is on those frequencies that are being used by cordless phones and Wi-Fi and all that. The magic is the hopping technology in Wi-Fi, which is enabling sharing. So Wi-Fi is non-rival. That's the magic of Wi-Fi. Whereas conventional 2G, 3G telephony is a rivalrous technology where you just cannot pack in more and more users. So it, it's absolutely fascinating how just intelligence at the end point, the intelligence in the Wi-Fi hotspot and the intelligence in the computer has enabled a vastly better way to use spectrum. And I wonder where mainline broadband technologies could go in the future to become more and more intelligent. Can we put more CPU at the end point and thus utilize spectrum more efficiently in a more uh, uh, non-rival way? So if spectrum can be made non-rival, the market failure significantly goes away. Uh, next is I really love the data initiatives, the crowdsourced data. You have already begun uh, taking data from telcos about call dropped. I totally endorse that perspective. And I feel we can push much harder in both directions. That we need to improve uh, our data situation. And here's a destination that we could perhaps think about. Now, uh, I come from a background in finance. In finance, we have a very gloomy view of the world that consumer protection is fundamentally hard in finance because consumers don't care enough about protecting themselves. Okay, It is just not easy to persuade consumers to take a little bit of interest, to understand you're being scammed here, and uh, it's a constant problem. So I was thinking, can we go one more step in making it easier for consumers to understand? So I was dreaming, imagine an app which runs here on my phone, runs at this physical location for me right now, which utilizes both the crowdsource data and the telecom uh, provider submitted data, and arrives at a summary statement. It arrives at a report card saying, in this location, the performance quality of Airtel is so much. The performance quality of Vodafone is so much. That is the app that I think we can persuade households to use. That even the most uh, illiterate user can feel uh, incentivized to take that much trouble to build that last step. So, hmm? 
so so we are happy to work with you on processing this data and studying this data but let's go one step further so far it seems to me that the crowdsource data is a little too geeky it's for people like me we should make it useful to normal users we should just take all the brain out that a person should be able to say look this is my home how are the various telcos in my home and you should just run that app and he gets a red green yellow so these telcos are satisfying sla yeah. these telcos are not satisfying sla the last point i wanted to bring up was that in voice quality uh, i'm not fluent on the technologies in addition to calls dropped so i know cdma reasonably well in cdma there was an absolutely fascinating property that as the pressure of spectrum availability at a given location went up cdma had this amazing ability to uh, degrade the voice quality in a continuous manner so you start from gsm voice quality but then continuously you keep on worsening and worsening doing lossy encryption but you just don't allow the call to drop so that's one more dimension of quality that is there so much congestion on spectrum that while you are getting a voice call through the voice is so distorted that it sounds really horrible so again a frontier on thinking about how we should measure performance what do we mean by the word uh, performance 